I'm going to do a chapter 11 t-test for two related samples demonstration. We'll do each one in a separate video. And then in addition to doing questions A through C, um, I'll also do effect size measures, all three, a Cohen's D and R squared and a confidence interval. A repeated measure study with a sample of N equals 16 participants. Produces a mean difference of M subscript D equals three with a standard deviation of S equals four. Use a two tailed hypothesis test with an alpha of 0.05. To determine whether this sample provides evidence of a significant treatment effect. One piece, if you look at this standard deviation, there's no subscript here. Um, typically, when I write the worksheets and the exam questions, I'll put a subscript D there, just like they have for the mean difference. And um, so that's where we'll start from. So the four-step hypothesis testing procedure. This again is 17, chapter 11, question 17A. Step one, we need to state our hypotheses. So we've got a two-tailed test. The hypothesis, the null, is that about the mean difference. They're always about the mean difference. The, the hypotheses always relate to the mean, the population values. So here, the null is that the mean difference is zero. The alternative is that it's not equal to zero. So whatever treatment we've done either has if it has no effect, then the difference between the initial measurement and the other measurement is zero if they're the same value. So mu d equals zero for our null. Mu d does not equal zero for our alternative because it's a two-tailed test. Step two, we need to find our critical values. In terms of the critical values, we need that it's a two-tailed test. We need an alpha, of, we need to know our alpha, it's 0.05, and we need our degrees of freedom. Here, our degrees of freedom is n minus one, where n is the number of participants, the number, the number of paired scores, the number of difference scores. We have 16 pairs of data, so we have 15 degrees of freedom. With this, we can go to table B2 and look up the values that we need. And we're going to have two values. It's going to be plus or minus some number because it's a two-tailed test. If I go here to share my screen, I go to the statistical tables here, table B2, the T distribution. The proportion in two tails combined, because it's a two-tailed test, alpha of 0.05, and down to 15 degrees of freedom. And what I see here, that it is plus or minus 2.131. What this means, what does this mean? This means that if we draw it out, because we still should be drawing things out, right? Negative 2.131, positive 2.131. When we calculate our t-test in step three, if we get a score that falls in here, 
we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. The result that we got, the difference that we measured, is not more than what we would expect by chance. There's no significant difference if it falls in the middle. If what we calculate falls in either tail, either here, out this way, or out this way, in either tail, in either direction, because it's a two-tailed test, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. What we're saying when we, re when we reject the null and accept the alternate is we're saying the difference that we observe is unlikely to be just due to chance, which means there is a treatment effect. It is a statistically significant difference. I'm going to write those over here, plus or minus 2.131. And my degrees of freedom was 15, because I'm going to need those later. You don't necessarily have to erase it because you, you know, or you don't have to rewrite it because you're not erasing anything. Step three. I encourage you to show as much work as you have time for. Because if you make a mistake, and I make those you know, simple mistakes, if you make a mistake, but you show all of your work, it's easier for me to see where you went wrong and help you correct that going forward. So you need first, you need your estimated standard error. The SM part shows us that it's the estimated standard error, SMD, estimated standard error of the difference scores. With a repeated measures t-test, everything's about difference scores. The formulas we have, one uses the variance, one uses the standard deviation. Because the question gave us standard deviation, that's what we're going to use, that formula. So the standard deviation of the difference scores divided by the square root of n. The standard deviation of the difference scores was 4. And n, we had 16 scores. So we have 4 divided by 4 which is one. Now we can take this estimated standard error and plug it into our T. This value, the difference that we expect if the null is true, because the test statistic is always about whether or not the null is true. We make a decision about the null. We reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. If the null is true, the expected difference is zero. So what we're going to do, the mean difference that was observed is three, three subtract zero divided by the estimated standard error of the difference scores, which was one. Right. What we now need to do, so this is up here, 2.131, that was T critical. That was our critical values. Um, our T obtained, or calculated, is three. Now what we need to do, is we need to make a decision. Step four, we need to make a decision, interpret it, provide evidence. Step four. I do highly recommend drawing it out. Put the information you know on it. So negative 2.131, over 2.131. Remember, anything in this middle region, fail to reject the null. 
Anything out in these tails, we're going to reject the null. The value we calculated in step three is three. So it's in that rejection. It's in the, the critical region. We're going to reject the null. Accept the alternate. Accept the alternative. This is our evidence. It shows me that you're not just guessing, because really you have a 50-50 shot of guessing. Sorry about that. And we're going to interpret it. There's a statistically significant difference. So I'm going to pause here and we will pick it back up with 17B.